My name is Sally. All through high school and college, I had to endure insults like, as long as I had a paper bag. The choice of boys and then men is extremely limited unless you are handsome and spread your legs to compensate. I have a very sexy body, slim and toned, with medium-sized breasts. But the thing is, my eyes, nose, and mouth are not quite up to standard. I have the body of my mother and the face of a lumberjack, my father. I love my dad, but a square forehead, big nose, and big ears look better on him than on me. Makeup can only do so much. Alas, it is what it is. As my mother told me, be patient, there is someone for everyone. It's impossible to become immune to insults, but sometimes other people surprise you. I went into a pizza place to pick up my order and heard someone among the softball players say that he would need two paper bags, one for her and one for him. In case she falls, lots of laughs and thumbs up as I waited to pay for my order. A giant over two meters tall passed by and said, Don't pay them any attention, cutie. He stood near their table, turned his back to them, and farted loudly. As they prepared to make a fuss, he stared at them menacingly, and they changed their minds. I think you boys owe the little lady an apology. One of them shouted, Excuse me, but the giant's icy gaze forced the other one to approach me. The guys and I probably drank too much. Sorry for the snide comments. Let me pay for your order, and reached for his wallet. Thank you, that's very nice. You have a nice smile, I'm Sean. I felt myself blushing and barely managed to say, Thanks again, I'm Sally. May I know your phone number? Well, I had my doubts that Sean would ever call me, but I was wrong. Sean wasn't then and isn't now a socially skilled professional, and his looks certainly wouldn't have helped him get dates. After we found each other, we had a year of courtship, and then we got married. Sean has a way of making me feel special. After one of our dates, we went to Sean's. I slowly undressed him, kissing his entire huge body. I spent time kissing and caressing him here and there. I tormented him for about an hour. Sean then fondled me for about ten minutes before I asked him to have sex with me. He had absolutely no idea how to give a woman sexual pleasure. He has amazing stamina. After he threw out his first charge, he could make love for a long time, and this gave us great pleasure. Sean is an architect in a small firm. He's been working there since we got married. People in this company don't really like social gatherings. I currently work for a real estate title inspection company. I have changed several jobs, but I have been here for five years since our children started driving. I'm not the eye candy that people want to see in front of them, so I don't work with clients. We have two boys, both smart, and we were proud to send them to college. We never had a chance to save for retirement. If it's not car problems, then training or home repairs. We may not live from paycheck to paycheck, but almost. We have a very fun group of couples in our neighborhood. There are five couples there, all around our age. We call ourselves a gang. All but one of the couples already have children living separately, and only one of them has a child who is not yet in college. We share our trials and tribulations over the past ten years. Previously, there were six couples, but one had family problems. They divorced, sold their property, and left. Although Sean had never been successful in dating, as he got older and more successful at work, he began to fancy himself a ladies' man. My girlfriends and gang ladies just roll their eyes when he spews some arrogant bullshit. It is unknown why Sean drives a pickup truck with a manual transmission. I think he thinks it makes him look macho. I grew up driving a manual, so I have no problem borrowing his truck when I need it. In the summer, I work flexible hours. Ten hours from Monday to Thursday and three days off. I use my Friday to do housework. Tomorrow we are having a festive dinner in the gang. Somewhere in the house I have a very beautiful lace tablecloth from my grandmother. It is stored in a cylindrical tube. The search began. After thoroughly checking the hallway closets and finding them empty, I moved on to the bedroom closets. There was a lost tube in the corner of Sean's closet. I was pulling him out of his mess when I knocked over a box of Sean's shoes. He hasn't worn them in years, probably since we went to his uncle's funeral about six years ago. 
The box tipped over and the shoes fell out. Pulling out the tube, I picked up the box and the shoes and was surprised, no, rather shocked, to find several photographs of a naked lady inside one of the shoes. I would be flattered if these were my photos, but they are not. I sat on the bed and struggled with my emotions. My anger helped hold back the tears. How to determine the age of a photo. She wasn't a runway model, but I suspect the guy gets turned on by any naked lady. She's not young, but younger than me. I began to remember the past, trying to establish any sign of who and when. I decided to make a copy of the photo that best showed her face. I cropped the copy so that it was just a photo of a face. I tried to exclude neighbors by starting to exercise, walking around the block several times every evening. I had no luck there, but I continued to do exercises. It also gave me time to think about my next steps. I was beginning to believe that perhaps the next best area to explore would be his work. I would pop in there on some random excuse, maybe to have lunch, just to look at those in the office. Nobody matched the photo. I had mixed feelings. I wanted to find her, but I couldn't. Our sex life was largely unchanged. We made love on Saturday or Sunday, and then again in the middle of the week. Not much happened that would shock the neighbors. When I really want something special, I can use sex as leverage over Sean. Even after all these years, his endurance is enough to give me intense pleasure. I had almost given up searching for the naked woman when the next blow shook me. Sean was just standing at the other end of the yard among those gathered around Jim's pool, yelling, looking at the TV, which was showing some kind of baseball game. Everyone was in swimsuits. The beer flowed like a river. The satellite radio in my car stopped working. After being stuck on hold for a long time and then speaking for a few minutes with someone from customer service in broken English, we discovered that the credit card in the profile had an issue with the expiration date. It was Sean's profile. I found his pants and pulled out his wallet. After resolving the customer service issue, I hung up. When Sean's wallet was pressed, it made a funny rustling sound. I waved my wallet like a fan and saw nothing that could explain it. I checked again. Yep, the rustling sound came straight from the middle. I found a zippered pocket in my wallet, and when I opened it, I found a bag of condoms rustling. Since I was on the pill, we didn't need condoms. I know that I am not beautiful, but I also know that I am not stupid. And here I am again, sitting on the bed, struggling with emotions. Once again, my anger helped dry my tears. I had a flash of anger or insight, depending on your point of view. My hobby of crafts and card making ensured I had a few paints and inks. I found a bottle of beautiful emerald green permanent ink. To mark boundaries and write on my homemade cards, I use a pen with a tiny needle. The pen cylinder can be filled with any color you need. I always empty and clean the pen after every use. Not wanting to get my hands dirty, I put on latex gloves. Just a tiny drop of this substance will leave a stain on your hands for a couple of weeks. I place the condom on the workbench. Using a syringe, I tried to extract the lubricant, but nothing happened. I mixed a large amount of emerald green ink with what little lube I could extract, then refilled the bag. I rolled the bag around, thoroughly mixing the contents. With just a dab of glue and my hot glue gun, I sealed the tiny hole I made next to the open here tear. I wrote, do not use, in tiny letters on the condom packaging with a pen. Well, he was warned. I carefully collected Sean's wallet. Sean won't have anything to worry about if he remains a faithful husband. Not knowing who Sean would have sex with or when made the wait very painful. I didn't want the neighbors to find out anything. What does the old naval sailor say? A chatterbox is a godsend for a spy. I needed to talk to someone about this, so I called my sister who lives a few states away. I decided to trust her. She really encouraged me. She thought it was the safest thing I could do. All he had to do was be faithful. No mistake, no harm. Sean and I have a very predictable existence. He gets home around six, and I follow soon after. Sometimes we meet in a restaurant before going home. Sometimes we go out into the city after I come home. And on Friday evenings, we always go out to eat. 
I was starting to think that whoever this was with could have happened a long time ago, and Sean forgot about the condom. If you know that carelessness happened in the past, it is a different kind of pain, not so burning. My naivety was shattered a few Fridays after I tinted a condom. Take off your clothes, turn off the light. You know how embarrassed I am about my weight. I shouldn't have let you take those pictures. Take out the condom. My husband and I are trying to get pregnant, and I don't want any little Sean's. Ready? The light is off. Give me a bag with a condom. I'll put it on you. I like it when you do that. Oh my God, this thing is really lubricated this time. What brand is this? I think it's the same as before. Oh, what a terrible smell. Put it on yourself. Hurry, I need to pick up the kids. Kiss me. Mmm, I'm ready. Come to me. Sean called around three o'clock in the afternoon and said he would be staying late. Then, around 6 p.m., he called and said he wanted to work out at the gym. I sent my sister a message. Looks like we have a runner. I should have felt crushed, but I was so proud of myself. I turned on the porch light and latched the door. Sean will have to ask me to let him into the house. Almost certainly he will understand that it was I who ruined his condom. I didn't know if Sean would be cruel. Years ago, we remodeled our two-car garage into bedrooms and built a carport in the driveway, parking our cars outdoors. I waited and looked out the window. A car drove up and parked between our house and the neighboring one. Nobody came out. I was a little worried because this car had not moved for over an hour. Finally, around 8 p.m., Sean pulled into the driveway. His shoulders were slumped as he shuffled towards the front door. I saw green spots on his face. His lips seemed greenish, and his palms were a very beautiful green color. Before he could reach the porch, a man jumped out of a parked car and ran towards Sean. You son of a bitch, you are having sex with my wife! He shouted, all the while emptying the pepper spray. As soon as Sean was distracted, rubbing his eyes, the guy dealt him a brutal blow to the stomach. Sean collapsed to the ground, gasping for air. The man began fiddling with Sean's belt. Pushing Sean's hands away, he managed to pull off his pants and underwear. Try and deny it now, asshole. He then kicked as hard as he could into Sean's groin, straight into his emerald green groin. I can honestly say that I have never heard such a loud scream and with such a variety of pitch changes. The dogs in the neighborhood, all barking, probably had their tails between their legs. As Sean doubled over and grabbed his groin, the man hit him right between the eyes. Sion leaned back motionless. A couple of more blows to the groin, without any response. Then the man returned to his car and sped off. Speaking of conflict, maybe call an ambulance, do to him with cold water to revive him, boil water and pour it on it or simply turn off the outside lights. There is no need to give your neighbors a reason to see this vile Martian. I turned off the light. About 20 minutes later, the doorbell rang. I leaned heavily against the wall. I need help. I'm so sorry, Sally. I did something terrible. Can I come in? Not today, Sean. And closed the door. I heard him shout. I can't drive a car like that. I need to see a doctor. Well, I didn't want the neighbors to get involved, so I walked out the door and said, Give me your keys and get in the back of the truck. You won't ride in front with me. Sean was struggling to get into the back of the truck, so I shouted, Move! I don't have the whole night! I drove him to the emergency room, driving over every bump in the road I could find. I tried to change gears as quickly as I could. He vomited on himself, very badly. When he tried to get out of the truck, I pressed the clutch, and he fell. Again, those primal screams. Now he is with people who can take care of him, so I went home. Sean has a lot of keys on his ring. I put the keys in his favorite shoebox. Around half past ten in the evening, I received a call from Jill, one of the gang members. She is an emergency room nurse at a hospital. She was euphoric and wanted to know what I was doing and how. She said Sean has health problems, especially men's health. Now he will need testosterone therapy. Since he also had a concussion, they were going to keep him overnight. Jill said a woman came into the emergency room around 3.30 p.m. with green hands, lips, and tongue. The lady also had green spots all over her body, stomach, thighs, butt, and chest. She looked for something to remove the ink. Sent on her way with the words, The only thing that seems to help you is time. 
the lady left in tears. Jill and I theorized that she put a condom on Sean, then wiped her hands on his stomach, and then touched Sean's face and neck. Sean must not have noticed the paint and had sex with her. Jill, I don't think we'll be a couple at the next party. She laughed. You think so? Fuck you, girl. I called my sister and we giggled like schoolgirls. I know I'll have crying spells and depression later over the loss of my marriage, but today I felt amazing. I have no remorse. I'm visiting a divorce lawyer on Monday. I'm not going to spend much time in this house anymore. Something good came out of him. Tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day, with the tradition of wearing something green, he will be ready to leave the hospital. I was out shopping on Saturday afternoon when Sean texted, I need my keys. I answered, you shouldn't have any problems finding them. I found the perfect green shirt with an Irish theme. For me, for you, for love and joy, I will be faithful to you as long as you are, but not a minute later. I bought it, went to the ladies' room and changed. I plan to wear it as often as I can. Who knows what the future holds for me? I may not be good enough to get married again, but I won't stay married to someone who needs or wants someone else. As I grew up, I realized that a confident and smart woman can get a man, no matter what she looks like. I will be completely fine, as my confidence is sky high today. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.